I hope you're well. Yeah, you are all well, and it's wonderful to be here in the house of God to share some words together. And God is a good God. Before we share the word with you, before I share the word, I'm going to lead us to a scripture. It's not primarily the main scripture I'm going to be sharing with you, but it's an important scripture that I want us to bear in mind. And that is in Romans 8 to 28. Let's open our Bible quickly to the book of Romans. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says this. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who were the called according to his purpose. I'm reading from New King James. Now it says, all things work together for good. Now, what I want to impress on you is this. When he says, and we know, church, we know. I know, you know, you have that confidence. You must have that confidence that all things work together for good for you. That is whether the situation is how you want it to be or not how you want it to be. God can make it work together for good for you. And he will make it work together for good for you. Yeah? God will turn every situation that you're going to, it will turn it into an advantage for you. It will turn into a victory for you because he's a victorious God. So I want to encourage you with that to start off. But it led me to where we need to be and what I want to share with you. And what else the title I'm going to give it to you is this it's doing your part in difficult times or do your part while you're waiting. Yeah, now the Bible says all things work together for good, so we know that whatever is it that we're going for good, that whatever is happening to us, we know that God is going to bring us to victory. But there are things that we can do while we're waiting. And we can start, and I'm going to talk about this very simple thing, but where, where I felt led to go is different from what I'm going to start off with. Now, we can start by, if I ask you, what can we do while we're waiting? Many of us will say, we pray, which is right. And the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Praise God. All right. We can also confess the word of God. Reminded us of the power that is in the word of God, we can continue to confess the word of God. We can also offer praise and thanksgiving while we're waiting. But where the Lord led me to is about the need, the importance of learning to wait while we're waiting for God to do what God has, what God has promised. Now, for some of us, we are waiting for God's promise. Eh? And the Bible in Psalm 27, verse 14, if you want to turn to it very, very quickly, I'm just going to give you some few scriptures. I'm not going to dwell too much on them. Psalm 27, verse 14, it talks about this. It says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and it shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. So while you're waiting, there's a need for an attitude for us to be of good courage. The Bible also told us in Isaiah 40, verse 31, it said, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah? And you will mount up with wings as he go. And you will run, not be tired. You will walk and you not faint. Because as you wait upon God, that is God's promise for you. But there is something I really wanted to share with us. The waiting that I want to talk about today is not the type of waiting that most of us are very good at. Many of us are very good at waiting with complaints, waiting with groaning. Yeah? But the Bible told us, it says, wait, it says, do everything without complaining. Yeah? Do everything without complaining. So the first one is about a horse learning to we can do the prayer, we could do confession of the word, we could do thanksgiving. Then there is the part of our, where we wait. And the Bible tells us that, yes, it will renew our strength as we wait. We have to be of good courage as we wait. Praise God. 
And then we're talking about what is our attitude while we wait, yeah? Now, this is where I am really going to. I want you to write this down. I will wait with integrity of heart. While I am waiting for my answer to come through, while I am waiting for my breakthrough, I will wait with an integrity of the heart. I could expand a lot on this. There are a lot of biblical scriptures or biblical um, characters that we could, we could focus on. But for order of time, I'm gonna focus on one person this morning. I'm gonna look at the character of Joseph. We first met Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. Joseph was a product of waiting. Rebecca had to wait a long time to have a child. So, and Joseph himself was a product of an, a, a matured relationship. His parents are quite whole when they had him. And his father doted on him. From verses one to three, we learn about the birth, about the love that Jacob had for Joseph, the technicolor coat, as we call it now in the musical world, and what that brought up in his brothers. But then when we learn, look, go further, we look at 37, still 10 chapter, we look at verse 5 to 11. In 5 to 11, he talks about the dreams. The first dream talks about the walking on the field and their bushels, the brothers' bushels bow, bow down to Joseph's one. And then when we then look further towards verse 11, he talks about the stars and the moon bowing down to Joseph. Now, this elicit negative response from his family. This negative response as we look further down, now we now move over to Genesis 39, this negative response led to Joseph being sold into slavery, yeah? Now, the question is this, as God promised to Joseph, has he stopped? No, he hasn't. What God had shown Joseph is what will happen in the future for Joseph. And for many of us, we carry visions, we carry dreams, we carry words that have been spoken over our lives and we're waiting for them to come to pass. And the longer we wait and they haven't come to pass, the longer we become dejected, the longer we start to doubt, the longer we start to become anxious. But God, the Bible says, God make all things work together for good. While Joseph was in the pit, sold into slavery, became a servant in the household of Potiphar, God's plan and purpose for him did not change. And you know something? No matter what you're going through, God's plan and purpose for you hasn't changed and it will not change. Now, you've been reminded at the beginning of this service that for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. So praise God. So I want you to hold on to that, that whatever you're going through. But while you're waiting, challenges might come. Challenges will come that will make you doubt sometime whether what God said to you is true or whether it's not true. Now, let's look farther down. So you're writing down. Now, when we now go quickly to Genesis 39, I want us to look down at an incident that happened. Look at this. From verse 39, verse 7. Chapter 39, verse 7. It says, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. She said, Lie with me. Yeah? Joseph had been in the pit, he has been sold. He's moved into his master's place. He's getting a good reputation. 
but that's not where God wanted him to be. And I'm going to say something right now. On the journey to going to where God wants you to be, there are times where there might be false dawn, where you might think, I have been where God wants me to be. I want to encourage you with this. Be full of discernment. Joseph never at one point took his high of what God has promised him. But he obtained favor because of something, which you'll read further down. He says, but he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what it is with me in the house. And he has committed all he has to my hands. There's no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How can I do this great weakness and sin against God? Hallelujah. Joseph demonstrated a level of integrity that a lot of people must struggle with. He has already, look at what he said. He said, there's no one greater than me. But Joseph realized that yes, even his journey is not complete. He knew that it was at a temporary stop. He knew that it was what looks good to him right now is not what God wanted to be. But while he's in that position, he is prepared to just keep his focus on God and do and whatever he wants to do, to do it with integrity. Now, I'm going to pack it there for a few seconds, and I'm going to ask us to go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 105. In Psalm 105, there is a line, a phrase, or a, a verse, which is amazing. Now, when we look at the life of Joseph, and we, we line it up to what was said in Psalm 105, it says this. Now, Joseph's life in going to Egypt was in an accident as was portrayed to us here in Psalm 105. And I'm sorry that I'm a bit slow today, but I want to make sure that you get it in. From verse 13, it says this, they, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no one to do them wrong. He was talking about Abraham. Yeah? Then he says, do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Moreover, it called for famine in the land. It destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them. Who did he send before them? The Lord already knew what was going to happen. There was going to be a famine. But he sent Joseph to go and prepare a sanctuary for the children of Israel. Imagine what would have been if Joseph had been content to just sit where he is in the Potiphar's house, he will have missed his destiny. He will have missed his destiny. Now let's go further. Then he said, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with feathers, with fetters. It was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word, look at this. This is what I wanted to hold on to. The word of the Lord tested him. And for us as believers, what does that mean? What that means is this. While you're waiting to see the fruition of God's promise, the word that God has spoken over your life, the word that has been revealed to you will continue to test you. It will continue to come to your remembrance. And every time it comes to your remembrance, you have an action you have to take. You can either praise or you can either moan and groan. You can either be anxious or you could be negative. And I'm going to pack it there for a few seconds. And I'm going to send us quickly back to the book of Romans. I'll share this in Alien School and I don't know whether I shared it with some other people. And I want us to go to Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, it says this, it says, for in Romans chapter 4, we learn about Abraham's attitude. 
Abraham's heart. The Lord called Abraham and said, go to a land I'm going to show you. When he got there settled, he didn't have a child. But the Lord promised him, he says, be blessed and multiply. And then he says, I will change your name from Abram, which means the father, it means the father. And I will change your name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. Now, what I want you to imagine is this. Every time that Abraham heard the word Abraham, not Abraham, Abraham. What is that affirming to him? It's, firm, it's affirming two things. It's affirming God's promise to him. It's reminding him of God's promise. But do you also know that on the flip side, the word is also testing him? Because the word is saying to him, you're going to be a father of many nations. But, now listen to this, but you don't have a child to your name. The promise hasn't come to pass. So there's a response that you have to give. So Abraham had to give a response. And this is what the Bible said. Let's go further down. From verse 19, it says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. It did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that he who had promised, he was also able to perform. Wow. Now, so every time that Abraham had the word, Abraham, you are father of many nations. The Bible says it was strengthened in faith. It was giving glory to God. It was fully convinced that God who has promised. Huh? That is what it meant that the word tested Joseph. The word that tested Joseph was the dream that Joseph had. The word that, pro that tested Joseph was the promise that he grasped from the word of God. And God has given you and I promises. And while we're waiting for those promises to come to pass, we have to hold on to those promises with faith. We have to hold on giving glory. We have to look beyond our circumstance. Listen, when we look further down the story of Joseph, Joseph, in refusing to sleep with Potiphar's wife, then ended up in jail. But as God's promise for him finished, no. What happened? Yeah, I don't know. The, the Bible told us in chapter 39 that while he was waiting, he continued to act with integrity. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 39. I've nearly finished. Verse 21. Genesis 39 verse 21, it says, now let me give you the background. Joseph has now ended up in prison. In 21, it says this, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor in the sight of the keepers of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph and all the prisoners who were with in the prison with him. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made him prosper. So while Joseph was on the way to the promised land where God had promised him, Joseph remained and continued to act with integrity. When he was in Potiphar's house, he acted with integrity. He did everything right. When he was in the prison, he did everything right. The Bible never told us whether he prayed, whether he fasted, whether he gave thanks, whether he went to church. No, but the Bible says he did everything right that is integrity while you and i are waiting for god to deliver his promise to us we have to wait and wait right we have to wait and wait with integrity we have to continue to do 
everything that we know to do to the best of our ability. In the book of Colossians, it says, whatever you do in words and in deed, do unto the Lord. Don't wait till you get the promised land before you do what needs to be done. One of the things I learned from studying this was the Lord has mapped out Joseph's steps along the way. But in mapping out his steps along the way, there are challenges. The Lord, because he, because he had shown Joseph that he's going to be a leader, doesn't preclude him or doesn't exclude him from challenges. And while you're waiting for God to take you to the promised land, to the realization of his promises, challenges will come. David had his challenges. King David, he was anointed probably at 16. He didn't become king for another 42 years. He was around 60 when he became king. Don't think he became king at 27. But he had challenges. He faced Goliath. He had the betrayals. The king tried to kill him. He had to run and live in a different land. But the Bible says this, he lived in integrity. So I want to encourage us. And then as we go further on, the Bible then told us that the same integrity was remembered when Pharaoh had his dreams and Joseph was plucked from the prison and brought to the rightful place that God had placed him. The question I ask for you is this. God in his infinity wisdom, infinite wisdom must still get Joseph to where Joseph needs to be. But what would have happened if Joseph I slept with Potiphar's wife. It will have lost the grounding. It will have lost its integrity. So I want to encourage us as we continue to wait. I want us to be people who wait, not just in spiritual things, but learn to wait in the physical things. The prayer, the thanksgiving, the fast, and that is spiritual. Joseph demonstrated that it was not only enough to wait, in the spiritual, but also wait in the physical. Job said, I'm going to read something to you that Job said, while Job was waiting, Job didn't even know where his deliverance was, come, was going to come from. But Job said for this, he says, far be it from me that I should say you are right. He was saying to his wife, he was saying to his advisors, till I die, I will not put away my integrity. Yeah? So David wrote, he says in Psalm 25, you want to write this down, Psalm 25, verse 21. Let integrity, uprightness be seen, for I wait for you. So my question to you, family, before I finish is this. How are you waiting? How are you waiting? Are you just waiting? And waiting and waiting just on the spiritual? but you're not on the physical. I'm going to share something with you. Some of us were waiting for God to move us from one job to another job, but we're not conducting ourselves with integrity where we are. God has a place, has a plan for you. But maybe the reason why you're not having the breakthrough you're waiting for is because you're not conducting yourself with integrity where God, where you are right now. So I want to encourage us, let integrity and uprightness be present in us while we're waiting God. How that's bless someone? God bless you. There's a lot more I can share with you, but I have decided to pack it here. Make integrity your watchword. While you're waiting, don't only just wait in prayer, don't only just wait in fasting, in joining the God's people in fellowshipping and everything do all of them but in your own personal life away from where we are not together where no one can see you remember that god sees you and act with integrity god bless you